Hi everyone, welcome. My name is John Cottrell and this is Embody Yoga. This is a 60 minute gentle yoga practice. So glad that you're here. If you're just tuning in, we are going to be doing some yoga today and let me tell you what we're going to be, what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing actually a pose and we're going to be manipulating that pose and that pose is triangle pose. Triangle pose is a lunge, it's a hamstring stretch and we're going to be revolving or twisting that posture. So of course we're going to be doing some hamstring work and a little bit of twisting. So here are the props that you might need for this practice. Perhaps a yoga blanket or just a towel, something like that, something soft that you can sit on or kneel on and kneel on. So a blanket or a towel. I'm gonna to suggest that you have a yoga strap or something like a yoga strap. It could be a jump rope or a belt, something like that. That's gonna help us with our hamstring stretching. So a yoga strap and something stackable, a few things like yoga blocks or some hardbound books. I've got two here, maybe two or three might actually come in handy. Uh, yoga blocks, something stackable. And then something optional here is a yoga bolster. This could be a pillow as well. This is just a firm cushion that you can use for uh, your Shavasana practice, maybe lying down to elevate your legs or your upper body, something like that, or even to sit on too. Okay, so that's our props, and we are ready to go. So go ahead and find a comfortable seat. This could be on your folded blanket or towel, on your yoga mat. You can cross your legs. You don't have to cross your legs. You can also extend your legs if that feels a little bit better for you, if you want to make sure your you know, knees feel good. You can also just sit up against a wall if you need a little extra support for your back or even in a chair and for this first part of the class, and then you can make your way over to your yoga mat. But let's start in seated, and as you come to your comfortable seat, just sit up nice and tall so you can feel the nice lengthening through your spine. And with that, just take a few deep breaths. You might breathe in deeply through your nose. You can exhale through your nose or out through your mouth. Do that one more time. Nice full breath in, and your exhale. And then just settle into slow, steady breaths. finding stillness in your body, breathing slowly and deeply. This is an opportunity for you to move inside of yourself, to become more aware and connected, arriving here in this moment, letting go of the things that are going on outside of you so you can pay attention to what's going on inside of you. And to help that journey inward, feel free to close your eyes and you're certainly welcome to keep your eyes open. You might just gaze forward or downward at the ground, at the floor. Just slow, steady breaths. Breathing in a way that you can feel your breath. Perhaps as you inhale, you can feel the breath rising to fill up your lungs. As you exhale, you might connect to your center. You just draw your belly inward toward your spine. You're gonna feel a light engagement in your abdominals. Again, as you breathe in, feeling the lifting and lengthening of your spine, breath rising to feel the expansion in your lungs. And your exhale, draw belly in, nice connection. And just continue with that sensation, bringing you even more to the present, fully aware. I like to call this our breathing meditation just preparing ourselves for our full practice today. This is also a nice opportunity to add a personal intention for your practice. And that could be anything at all. Something that you're needing or desiring in your life. Maybe you're going through some struggles and want to release any tension or worries. And perhaps even just opening yourself to love and joy. Go ahead and take three more breaths here in stillness. We'll add a very simple movement, our moving meditation. Whenever you're ready, inhale and extend your arms out and all the way up into the air, completing that inhale. Then exhale, extend your arms out, reaching across the room letting your arms come back down by your side. 
Let's do that again. Inhale, reaching out. Good energy in your hands and fingers. Reaching all the way out, then up into the air. Exhale, reaching out. Good energy in your arms, and then all the way back down. Go ahead and continue breathing on your own and moving at your own pace. The same very simple movement. The extended arms reaching out and up and letting them come back down by your side. Allowing your breath to move you. Allow your breath to move you. It's the inhale that it's like inflating a balloon. And that inflated balloon just rises up into the air. And that slow release back down. As you move in slow motion, just notice the energy in your arms, your shoulders, your hands, the lengthening through the sides of your body. And because you're breathing in, feeling, the, feeling this uplifting sensation and more lengthening through your spine perhaps. The exhale, we're still connecting to our center, so be sure you can still feel the belly drawing in, that light contraction of the abdominal muscles. Go ahead and complete the breath that you're on right now and take two more breaths. Just going at your own pace. And when you're complete, just bring your arms back down by your side, coming back to stillness, and just continue with slow, steady breaths. And from here, let's bring the hands behind us. You might just come up onto the fingertips here as you bring your arms back behind you. And then a little roll of the shoulders back and see if you can hold them back. You might even just squeeze the shoulder blades together behind you so you feel that contraction of the, of the upper back muscles to hold them in place. And then tip your chin up just a little bit so it doesn't strain your neck. We're just providing a little bit more space and opening in the upper chest. Now in the seated mild back bend, go ahead and inhale, press into the ground with your fingertips. Feel that energy rise up the arms. Feel the breath rise to fill up your lungs. You might even feel a stretch quality across your chest from shoulder to shoulder. When you exhale, just draw belly in, navel to spine, engaging your core, and also still squeezing the shoulder blades together. So again, an inhale to fill up your lungs. Feel the energy in your arms and shoulders. Exhaling, draw belly in, squeezing shoulders back. Although a very simple posture, lots of energy generated here. Two more breaths in and out. And when you're complete, just lower your chin so your neck is neutral. Walk your hands toward your body so you can rise up, sitting up nice and tall once again and your arms just relax down by your side in your lap. Just take a deep breath or two as your body settles. That was our mild back bend. Let's take a forward fold here. So if your uh, legs happen to be crossed, go ahead and uncross your legs and place the soles of your feet together. This is bound angle pose. And if you'd like, you can use your blocks or books or even some small pillows and place them underneath your knees right here so that your, your legs can actually relax right here. And that's always a nice thing. Go ahead and hold on to your ankles or shins or even your feet or toes. And then inhale just to sit up nice and tall as best as you can. Exhale, draw belly in, nice engagement as well as supporting the body as you now hinge forward just a little bit. You're leading with your heart and chin, just a slight angle in the upper body. You don't have to go too far at all. Hold there for just a couple of breaths. Now you're welcome to stay just like this, but if you need or want a little bit more sensation, go ahead and inhale, getting the body ready to move, nice long spine. Exhale, draw belly in and maybe hinge forward a tiny bit more. In our soft flow practice, as a reminder, we like to go at 60%, either through movement or even coming to the end pose that we're only at 60% rather than 100%. Just to dial it back a little bit so that we can really find ease and comfort throughout the body. And again, you're welcome to go a little deeper, but not too much, not past that 60 or 65%. You're very welcome to lower your chin, even around your back a little bit. 
creating a, a different sensation through the back body. And wherever you're holding, just take deep breaths. Notice the sensations. This may occur in the inner thighs as a hip opener. If your back is rounded, you might feel a stretch quality or flexion in your back. Let's take three more breaths in our seated forward fold with the knees bent, bound angle pose. And when you're ready to move, start by lifting your chin so that will re-extend your spine a bit. Hinge your way back up to seated. You can even place your hands on the ground and just press to help lift yourself up as a little assist until you're nice and tall. Hold here in stillness. Take a breath. All right, let's set our props to the side here. We're going to kind of swing around and come to our hands and knees. So this is where you want to use your blanket or towel if you have one. I like to open mine up at a into a rectangle here so I can kneel and place my hands here at the top. Cat and cow. Starting with a cow pose, which is an inhale, we'll, where you'll look up or forward, a little arch in the back. So your pelvis tips back, creating that little back bend feel. Your belly drops, creating a little back bend. That's cow. Exhale, tuck tailbone underneath, pull belly button up towards your spine. Your back will round, chin will lower towards your chest. That's cat. And reverse it. Inhale, tip the pelvis back, create the back bend, look forward. Exhale, round it all out. Cat pose. And just continue this nice flow bringing fluidity, nice movement throughout the spine, your whole back, the rocking pelvis, add some nice mobility through the pelvic region. And with your cat pose, that exhale, pulling belly button up towards spine is a nice reminder of your core connection, that abdominal lock. Just as we did with our breathing, we exhale and draw belly in towards spine. So that's what's happening here. All right, let's go ahead, finish the breath that you're on right now and take two more breaths in this cat cow flow. And when you're complete, just come to a neutral tabletop position. Just hold for a few seconds and just look directly down. Maybe you're looking down between your hands. That way you know that your neck is neutral. And if you are using some padding, let's crawl off the pad and just set it to the side. You can always bring that in a little bit later if you want. Come back to hands and knees. Let's set up for our next pose, which is downward facing dog. What we like to do here, if your hands are still directly underneath your shoulders, step your hands forward so they're out from underneath your shoulders. Even spread out your fingers pretty wide so you can get a little stretch through or between each finger. Lean into your hands, a little press into the ground to flatten your palms to stretch your palms open. As you press, also feeling an energy in your strong straight arms. Hold that sensation. You'll tuck your toes under. Let's do another cat-cow flow, getting ready to move. First, inhale, cow pose, the back bend, arching. Exhale, round it into cat hold, cat pose. And then lift your knees off the ground, send your hips up into the air, and that should guide you right into downward facing dog. The lifted hips re-extends the spine. And to even feel a little longer, keep pressing hands strongly into the ground as if you're trying to push the ground away from you while the hips continue to lift up into the air. Your knees can stay very bent, I would recommend it. That way your hips stay mobile, which will help to extend the torso. All right, look straight down at the ground. Walk your feet forward until they're maybe in the center of your mat. Just be sure you're flat on your feet, and then slide your hands towards your toes. You'll be in a forward fold for a moment. Shift your weight back into your heels. Bend your knees, look forward, slide your hands up the legs, keep rising all the way up until you're nice and tall. Looking forward, then inhale, extend your arms up into the air. Reach, hold for a second here in extended mountain pose. Inhale again, then exhale, you can bring your arms down by your side. Very nice. All right, just wanted to bring you to a nice tall standing position here.
and just make our way into mountain pose. So standing, maybe with your feet about hip distance apart, toes forward. So you have a nice steadiness and strength in the lower section of the body, nice alignment as well. And take a moment, just place your hands on your hips, hands on hips, and just being sure your hips are square, they feel even, and you also have an even distribution of weight, okay? You're not leaning to one side or the other, but pretty balanced here. All right, just some arm movement. We're just gonna inhale, reach out and up, just like we did in seated, reach to the sky, exhale, bring your arms back down. We're just gonna do that one more time, that's all. Inhale, reach out and up, Big stretch here at the top and exhale arms back down by your side very nice okay let's do our half salute to the sun we're going to fold and come back up here we go we're going to inhale take the arms back up into the air we're going to exhale spread your wings bend your knees feel like you're sitting back into a chair take your time with this and you're kind of hinging forward starting to fold forward hands come down towards toes let your head hang loosely that's your forward fold. Let's continue. Inhale, slide your hands up to your shins or knees, extending your spine, long, flat back. Exhale with a good bend in the knees, fold back down. Now you can choose how deeply you fold, okay? Now I'm going to bring my blocks in and just kind of, I'm just leaning out on my blocks. And it just feels a little bit more comfortable. It's not straining my back, but I can feel a nice stretch in my hamstrings. And even more so if I lean a little bit forward into the blocks and even towards my toes. Okay? If you don't have blocks handy, you can even just rest your hands on your shins, knees, or thighs. Or again, if it feels okay for you to hang heavily forward, go ahead and do so. Maybe you can touch your toes or the ground. So lots of variations in your forward fold. Take two more breaths wherever you are. Okay, we're going to go into a half lift and hold it. So start by shifting your weight back into your heels. Bend your knees. Feel like you're going to sit down into a low chair. Look forward. Just lift your head a little bit. That should re-extend your spine. Slide your hands up to your shins or knees. Actually, maybe up to your knees or thighs. Actually, push into the thighs and extend your spine. So we're only halfway up. Long like a table right here. This is half forward fold. Knees are slightly bent, but I still feel this in the hamstrings. Some core engagement is happening here too, since we are folded over like this. Okay, keep leaning back into the heels again. Bend your knees. Look forward, spread your wings, and come all the way up to standing, reaching high into the sky. Extended mountain pose, a little extra stretch there at the top, and then arms down by your side. Good. So that's really kind of a little introduction to start getting into our hamstrings, just holding that forward fold. All right, let's do a standing lunge sequence, our variation of Warrior One. Okay, once again, standing in mountain pose. Take a breath or two, getting ready. We like to start with soft knees, so we'll put a little bend in the knees and keep that bend in your knees. Start shifting your weight into your right foot, so more pressure into the right foot. Start to lean forward just a little bit and just step the left foot back. So we just have the arch in the back, heel back there, left foot, just flexed toes. And then pivot the left heel to the floor and kind of sit right in the center of this posture, right between the feet here. Go ahead and inhale, take the arms up into the air right here. Exhale, bring your hands to your hips. Push the pelvis down, and as you do so, feel long and tall in the torso. And then turn your torso just enough so you're mostly facing forward. We're going to raise the arms again. Inhale, reach into the sky. Now this exhale, just bend the elbows a little bit. We're still keeping the arms up, but just bend the elbows so it'll look like this. Just a good bend in the arms, maybe like a cactus shape or a goal post on a football field. So we're just facing forward in our lunge, a mild lunge, not too much distance, distance between the feet. Okay, let's move. Inhale, re-extend the arms up into the air. Exhale, bring hands to hips. Keep them there. You're gonna lean forward, shifting weight into the front foot, enough where you can easily pick up that back foot, step forward, and let's stand up tall, creating that strong straight line in the body again, reaching into the air, extended mountain, 
Exhale, arms down by your side. All righty. Okay, so that's our variation of Warrior One. Let's do the same thing, other side. Mountain Pose, let's begin. Start by putting a slight bend in the knees, shifting weight into the left foot, feel grounded, connected. You can feel some energy in that left leg. Start to lean forward just a little bit. This is really just for balance, so you can start stepping or tapping the right foot back. You can have the flexed toes there. Your heel is lifted initially and then pivot or turn the foot so the heel can press down into the ground and just settle back until you're balanced right here. Go ahead and inhale, take the arms all the way up into the air and exhale, bring hands to hips. Push your pelvis down as you elongate through the torso, making space in the belt line so you can turn a little bit to face mostly forward. Let's re-extend the arms up, inhale, Exhale, put a good bend in the elbows, that cactus shape. Okay, our warrior one. Variation, not too much distance between the feet, so we should be able to feel pretty balanced here. If you need more balance, feel free to just place your hands on a wall or a table or chair out in front of you. That's perfectly fine too. Let's inhale, reach arms straight up into the sky. Exhale, bring hands to hips. Lean forward, put weight into this front foot, enough so that you can easily step the right foot forward so it meets the other. Once again, inhale, stand up tall, straight leg, straight torso, reaching high into the sky. Exhale, arms down by your side. Wonderful. Okay, let's do a little flow here. Taking our time. We're gonna be moving into our second variation of Warrior One in a moment. Let's inhale, take the arms all the way up into the sky. Exhale, spread your wings, bend your knees, sit back into imaginary chair as you slowly fold. That's really good control and core work when you can move slowly like this. Inhale, slide your hands up the legs to extend your spine, long, flat back. Now on this exhale, let your knees bend a lot, let your back round a lot until you're low enough so you can place your hands on the floor in front of you and start walking both of your feet back to the back end of your mat until you're in a straight line, plank pose. Hold here for strength for a couple seconds. You'll inhale. As you exhale, bend your knees slightly, then send your hips up into the air, moving into downward facing dog. You might need to adjust your feet, maybe even your hands on your mat here to help settle into your pose. Remember, we want a nice long spine, so continue pressing firmly into the mat with the hands. Lift your hips a little higher. In order to do so, make sure there's a good bend in your knees. Let's continue, you're gonna inhale, lift your right foot off the floor and extend the right leg back and up slightly, just to the back of the room is fine. Reaching through your toes, exhale, bend your right knee, bring your knee in underneath you towards your chest or your chin. At the same time, you're shifting your body forward. Look at your shoulders, you want them aligned over your wrists. And then just set your right foot down, you'll be on your toes. Set it down, and then set the left knee down on the ground. This is gonna allow you to pick up your right hand, reach back, literally go pick up your right foot and step it higher on your mat, just moving it. Replace your hand on the ground, re-lift your left knee behind you, pivot left heel to the floor. You need to shift the weight back like we did in the first version of Warrior One. So just kind of pull back, rise up to fingertips, feel an even distribution of weight between both feet. Now elongate your torso out over the front leg. Then hinge from hips, rising up, facing four, reaching up into the air. Inhale, and then as you exhale, just lunge a little deeper, keeping arms straight as possible. Now is our second variation of Warrior One. Let's hold here a little bit longer. Deep breaths, feeling the new sensations in the legs since there's more distance between the feet. And maybe a little difference in the shoulders and arms. Okay, we're going to inhale, reach high through your fingertips. Exhale, turn your torso towards the left side of the room as you bring your arms down to parallel. Now we're in warrior two. You can stay just like this in regards, in regarding the feet, but you can also take the feet a little wider, okay, a little farther apart if you want, not necessary. I like to, and bend this right knee a little bit more to get more into the inner thigh. That's just an option today. You don't have to go much deeper at all. For me, this is about a 75% as far as my warrior two. So I could back it up a little bit. So just tune in to what you're doing. Okay, we're gonna take the left hand, this back hand, take it up and over, face the front of the room, 
fold, bring both hands down to the floor, rise up onto tiptoes behind you, stay there in a runner's lunge for a quick second, press firmly into the ground with your hands, releasing the weight from the right foot so you can slide it back into plank pose. Hold there for a few seconds for strength, and then a slight bend in your knees, hips into the air, downward facing dog, make your adjustments. Hold for a few more seconds and we'll continue our lunge flow. Second variation of warrior one, second side. Inhale, lift your left foot and extend the, extend the leg back and up. When you exhale, bend the left knee a lot, bring the knee in underneath you towards your chest, shifting forward until your shoulders are over your wrists, set the left foot down. Set the right knee down. Now, if you can get the left foot all the way up to the left hand, you're fine. If it doesn't make it, if it's, it's fallen short, don't worry. Go get the foot and place it up higher. Relift the right knee. Pivot right heel to the floor. Make sure it's grounded. Find weight and balance between both feet. So you align the body just right. And then elongate your torso out over front leg. Then you're ready to move. And inhale to hinge your way up. Reach up into the sky. Exhale, lunge a little deeper. As best as you can, you're facing forward. Your left knee and toes are pointing directly forward. The right leg is straight behind you. Even the outside edge of your back foot's pressing strongly into the ground. Notice in the sensations in your body. I notice something in my right hip flexor because of this lunge. I'm also aware of my shoulders. All right, let's breathe in. Exhale, turn your torso now to the right side of the room as you bring your arms down to parallel. Either stay here or create more distance or even less distance between the feet, depending on what you need at the moment, what you would like to do in this moment. Noticing if you're at 60%. Another way, if, if this tires out your arms, here's another variation to just dial down the degree. You can bend your elbow, something like this. Okay, if you need to change that sensation in the arms. Okay, let's take the right hand up and over, face forward, fold and lunge, okay, or hinge. Bring hands down to the floor, rise up onto tiptoes behind you, pause for a second. Push palms firmly into the ground, strong arms, slide left foot back, plank pose, hold. And we're going to set the knees down gently on the ground. Start to sit back towards the heels and then off to the side, onto the mat, so you can swing the legs around to the front here. Okay, now we're ready for some hamstring stretching. Okay, we already did an initial stretch by doing those forward folds. Now we're just gonna do a seated forward fold. This is where you might wanna use your strap or belt, whatever you've got. So you wanna sit tall, Okay, with long straight legs, flex your feet here to keep the legs energized. Get your strap and wrap it around the feet. There we go. Let's hold on to the strap with kind of a bent elbows, relaxed arms here by your side. You're just holding onto the strap. We're gonna little, tug the strap a little bit to help you sit up as tall as can be. Nice long neck looking forward. Let's inhale again. The exhale, we're pulling belly in for support, ready to move. Pull on the strap gently to hinge forward just a little bit. It's feeling like you're sending your heart and chin out towards your toes. But even think like you're going past your feet. That way your spine stays really straight. You can do that. Hold here, this mild hinging sensation. You can certainly go a little deeper depending on how much stretch you want to put into the hamstrings. Now you don't have to keep the knees straight or you don't have to get the legs straight. You can also bend the knees a little or a lot if you need to. If they're bent a lot, you might want to tuck something underneath like the towels or blankets right there. Even rounding your spine if you want to go a little deeper. Right, we're going to hold here. So just be sure you're in a place where you can hold this pose. Taking these deep breaths, modify if you need to. If you feel like you're too deep or you're past that 60%, okay, meaning you've gone deeper, maybe you've gone to maybe 70 or 80%, okay, dial it back. Really getting into our hamstrings. Okay. 
about three more breaths here. And when you feel complete, let's rise back up until you have an extended spine right here. All right, let's go ahead and remove our props. You can just move your strap to the side, any other props. Let's stay here in seat with legs straight out in front of us. Just come to staff pose. Just place your hands on the mat by your hips right here, pushing into the ground just to help you extend spine. Be sure the shoulders are rolled back. Long neck, look forward. This is staff pose. Couple breaths here. Still quite energizing, although it's a fairly simple posture. And then go ahead and relax. Okay, we're going to stay seated, but just go ahead and come back to cobbler's pose. I'm going to, fa I'm going to face you for a moment. Okay, we're going to change this, but I just wanted you to come to cobbler's pose just to take that stretch out of the hamstrings. Sitting up nice and tall. I'm just holding on to my feet, but that could also be your shins or ankles. Sitting up nice and tall. A couple more breaths. All right, we're going to do a twist. We need to introduce a twist to the body. All right, so let's change our legs again. So we'll just cross your legs. Okay, this is called easy pose when you just cross your, at your shins like this. Now, I like to sit in half lotus. That just feels better for me, okay? But you sit in a way that feels best for you. And also, I like to sit on that, a blanket just to kind of prop myself up. So use whatever tools and resources you need to sit comfortably. And we're going to engage a twist. Okay, I'm going to try to mirror you. So take your right hand and place it behind you. It might just be by your right hip or by your spine. Push into the ground to help you extend spine. It's just an assist to lengthen your spine. And take your left hand and place it over onto your right knee or thigh over here. When you inhale, get even taller. As you exhale, draw belly in, again, providing support. As you mildly twist to the right, not very far at all. Okay, just a mild rotation. Okay, check in with your percentage. Going back to that 60%. Now, here's another way that you can gauge that 60%. Maybe if you feel like you can hold this posture for, you know, several minutes and without feeling too tired, then you, you're probably working at that lower level, which, you know, is quite comfortable. If you feel like you're going to get too tired or stressed too quickly, then maybe you've gone past that 60%. Now, we're not going to be holding it for several minutes, but imagine that you could. All right, let's inhale, get taller still, making space along the spine. Exhale, draw belly in for support so you can unwind without any clunkiness in the spine. Facing forward, let's bring both hands out in front here, resting on your legs. Okay, that's our mild twist. We'll do the other side. Okay, take the left hand behind you by your hip or low back. Push into the floor to help extend spine. Right hand over here to left knee or thigh. We'll inhale again, get even taller, more length. Exhale, pull belly in and a mild turn to the left. Holding here, checking in. Because what we sometimes do, especially with this hand on the thigh, we, we actually pull ourselves. So resist the pull. It's just to hold you in place, not to pull you into place, if that makes sense. Okay? So you want to be able to turn, and I like to say, find that natural stop where your body just stops automatically, and then just stay there. If that's still too far, then loosen it up, soften it up. Could you hold this for several minutes? Deep breathing to support your posture. Again, just introducing a rotation through the torso. All righty. This is one of the postures, our featured pose. We're going to be doing triangle pose, which is a standing lunge that has straight legs, and then we're going to be twisting it. Two more breaths. The second inhale, we want to get nice and tall, lengthen spine. Exhale, pull belly in, supporting the body so you can now unwind facing forward, hands resting in your lap. Feel everything just come back to neutral. That's why we like to hold in stillness for a few seconds after the pose. All righty, let's come out of our seated posture, move your props out of the way. Come back to hands and knees. Here, 
Stepping hands forward, so again, they're out from underneath the shoulders, spread out your fingers, press palms into the ground, strong arms, tuck your toes underneath, cat and cow, inhale, cow, look up or forward, arching the back, exhale, round it out, hold for a second, and then lift knees, then hips, downward facing dog. Settle into place, let's continue with lunges. Inhale, lift right leg, extend it back, reach long. Exhale, bend right knee, bring it in towards chest, shifting your body forward. Maybe you can bring foot right up to the hand. Even just behind the wrist will work fine. If you made it, let's go ahead and pivot left heel to the floor, grounded. Shift for balance. Extend torso out over thigh. Inhale, hinge your way up, reaching into the air. Exhale, lunge. Hold for a second. Feel the posture, first warrior. Inhale again. Exhale, opening up to warrior two. Just turning so you're facing sideways. Arms come down to parallel. Stay right here. Now we're ready for triangle. What we're going to do is just straighten the right leg. And as you straighten the leg, feel an energy move up the thigh, passing the waistline up through the side of the body. So you feel tall through the torso. Okay, reach out with the arms like this. Inhale as you do so, then exhale, bring your hands to your hips. And just kind of notice the alignment of the hips. Okay, we did that a little earlier. Okay, now with the hands on the hips, you're gonna imagine like you're holding on to a, like a big bowl or a bucket, like a bucket of water. And you're gonna pour the bucket of water down the right leg, okay? So just tip the bucket right there. So your right hand's gonna drop down, left hand kind of lifts, that's gonna Displace the hips there, right there. And we're tipping over a little bit. And this basically, this is triangle pose. Now you could take the arms out and then rotate your arms so your right hand is reaching down towards right leg here, left hand up into the air. Okay, or you can keep hands on hips, which is what I'm going to do. Okay. For a little extra sensation is in also stability for this leg and hip, Lift your toes. Can you see that? I just lifted my toes and just kind of push the balls of the foot and the heel a little bit more firmly into the ground. It's going to fire up the leg, helping to support more through the uh, hip. Two more breaths. So hands on hips or extended arms for your triangle. To come out of the pose, we're going to bend the right knee a whole lot, come back up to warrior two, go ahead and re-extend the arms right there, and we're gonna do our windmill. So your left hand's gonna come up and over face forward, fold, hinge, hands to the ground, lift the left heel, hands firmly into the ground, slide right foot back, plank. Pause for a second, bend the knees, hips into the sky, downward facing dog. Feel that nice re-extension of the spine. Okay, inhale, lift the left leg, reaching back, Exhale, bend the left knee, bring it in underneath you, shifting forward and see if this left foot can come up closer to the left hand or maneuver the same way we did earlier. Right heel turns to the floor when you're ready, shifting the weight back, weight on both feet, extended torso out over left thigh. Inhale, hinge from hips to rise up. Exhale, lunge, hold for a second, just feel this. Inhale, reach. Exhale, opening to your warrior two. You don't have to change the distance between the feet, because when we get into triangle pose, I find personally that it, it, it works a little bit better if the feet aren't too far apart. Okay, you're gonna extend the left leg straight as can be. And again, you wanna feel that energy rising up the thigh through the belt line up the side of the body. Inhale, reach out with the arms. Exhale, bring hands to hips. So again, we place the hands on that imaginary bucket. And we're gonna tip that bucket of water so it pours down the left leg, right there. And that's your triangle pose. Again, you can stay just like this or extend the arms high and low, okay? But just for that 60%, maybe hands on hips. But just to help stabilize kind of the lower half of the body, remember you can lift your toes and just really kind of feel that connection into the ground with your heel and balls of the feet to fire up the leg a little bit to help support through this this left hip section, okay? And do notice this stretch, all right, in this standing hamstring stretch or triangle pose variation. 
to come out of the pose. We're going to put a good bend in the left knee, lunging, so we can come back up nice and tall through the torso, re-extend the arms, warrior two. Okay, bring the right hand up and over, face forward, fold, hinge, bring hands down to the ground, rise up onto tiptoes behind you, hands firmly planted into the ground, slide left foot back, plank pose. Okay, let's take a little quick rest, bring your knees to the floor. And if you're able, sit back into hero pose. But if that's too much sensation in the ankles and or your knees, then here's what I call half hero. You can tuck the toes under and just sit back, walk the hands back so there isn't too much, there's no weight on the hands, but not, not a lot of weight in the knees or feet, okay? What you're mainly doing here is actually getting your blocks ready. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do, because I, I want a lot of support. So I'm bringing my, my cushion here, because it's pretty firm. Okay, hopefully, hopefully this works. So I'm bringing my cushion to the front and putting my blocks on top of it, because I, I want a high stack right here, okay? So they're ready to go. So if you've got your blocks, it can even be the seat of a chair, okay? So even higher still, and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, let's return to downward facing dog. First our hands and knees, tuck toes, lift knees and hips. Okay, same flow here. Whenever you're ready, an inhale to lift right leg extended back. Slowly take your time. Exhale, bend the knee, shifting forward so we can step through, landing near right hand if you're able, or maneuver the same way as we did earlier. Pivot left heel to the ground, put weight into that back foot. Extended torso, we're going to warrior one, so it's an inhale to rise, reach up into the air, and our exhale opening to warrior two. Pause for a second, arms extended, and then just relax the arms. Okay, now I realize my, my props are too far away, okay? Because I really want to bring my props in much closer, okay? So you may want to bring in your blocks, maybe on the inside of this right foot, something like this, okay? Let's go ahead and, go ahead and extend the right leg once you've got everything in place next to you. Straighten the leg. Again, that energy rising up. Go ahead and place hands on hips. Take your triangle, so you're gonna pour out that water right there. So everything just kinda comes at an angle, okay? Nice angle there. Keeping hands on hips and even maneuvering the pelvis with your hands, you're gonna turn to face forward. And if you can, hinge forward more. Release the left hand, place it, there it is, on your stack of blocks or books, whatever you've got, okay? Being careful, because mine is not very steady. Still extending through spine, I'm gonna continue rotating to my right side. So you can see I just took my right arm and kind of swung it out to the right, and I'm rotating my whole body to the right. This is really modified, because I'm so far away from the ground, because ideally, yes, this left hand would be on the floor, but what am I, about a foot and a half away from the ground, maybe a little bit more? and I'm rotating, which really provides a little bit more space in the waistline, so I can rotate with ease, and it kind of mimics, at least my, the, the rotation, the angle of my rotation, kind of mimics what we did seated, and we did our seated twist. So this is revolving triangle. Breathe in, we're gonna exhale, and just turn the face forward, bend the right knee, Okay, make sure there's balance on both feet so you can take your hand off the blocks or books, whatever you've got. Reach forward, rise up, back to warrior one. Okay, open to warrior two. Yes? Then windmill, so this left hand comes up and over, turn to face forward, fold. Okay, while we're folded, you might want to just move your props maybe to the other side, getting ready to go. And bring hands to the ground. Runner's lunge, strong hand, strong arm, slide right foot back, plank, downward facing dog. All right, let's set up for the other side. If you need to come to your knees so you can move your props, please do so. And then rejoin me. Inhale, extend left leg up when you're ready. Exhale, stepping through. Left foot comes to the top of the mat or near left hand. Right heel turns to the floor, planted firmly, find that stability, extend the torso, inhale, rise, warrior one. We're gonna open with an exhale immediately to warrior two. Let's relax the arms. 
I'm already going to bring in my props, bring them in much closer so they're ready to go. Then extend or straighten the left leg, preparing for the triangle. You can bring hands to hips right here. Straight left leg, bucket of water, tip, pour it out, find the angle that works for you. You don't have to go too far. We're going to inhale, even finding more extension through the torso. Exhale, manip manipulating the pelvis, we can turn to face forward at this angle. Lowering a little bit, releasing right hand so you can place it on your stack books or blocks. I like this height. <laughs> this feels really good. And then I can take the left arm out to the side and start to rotate to the left. So this is our revolving triangle pose. And again, yes, this right hand can be much lower, but this feels pretty good. And you probably can't tell the angle of my left hand. It probably looks like it's straight up in the air, but it's not. It's way out at an angle, okay? I'm almost reaching straight across the room, okay? Rather than I could turn, but see, that's a little bit too much for me right there. So you can kind of check in with your body but still very effective. Check in, where do you feel this? Okay, I feel this in my left hamstring for sure, okay, in my pelvis, in low waistline as I'm rotating. Okay, let's breathe in, and exhale just to kind of unwind. Find balance on both feet. Okay, lunge forward, just bend this left knee, okay? Both arms forward and up into a warrior one, inhale. Exhale, opening to warrior two. And then our windmill. So this right hand comes up and over, face forward, fold. You might need to move your props, at least I need to. So you can bring your hands down to the ground. Rise up on the tiptoes behind you, runner's lunge. Pressure into the ground with the hand slide, left foot back, plank, hold. Hold a bit longer. And let's bring knees to the ground. Sit back slowly, carefully to hero, but really we're just going to slide off the feet onto the ground so you can swing the legs around to the front. All right, go ahead and sit in the center of your mat before we lie down because that's what's coming next. Let's get some props, maybe a blanket for your head, a couple of blocks because we're going to be going into our bridge pose. We need to sit on our blocks, okay? So make sure they're handy, you can easily grab your items. Then go ahead and lie down. Lying down with knees, bent feet flat on the ground. Even pausing here for a moment. A few deep breaths, make sure you can reach your blocks. Getting ready for our bridge pose, a supported bridge pose, it's a supported back bend. Whenever you're ready, breathe in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, engaging belly just to give you energy so you can lift your hips up off the ground enough to slide your blocks underneath you and sit right there on your blocks. And that's fine, just staying right there, kind of coming to a comfortable position. So you can just hold here easily, breathing deeply. We're going to add on to this in a moment. Since we were working legs, hamstrings, in our triangle poses, let's add an inverted leg extension. All right, in a moment, we're going to extend the legs, both legs, straight up into the air. Now, you can do this while still seated on your blocks, or if you'd like, remove the blocks, come all the way down to the floor, or I know some folks that like to maybe place a cushion underneath, so you're not lifting up too high, but just something soft underneath you, and then extend your legs. So whatever you like to do. So whenever you're ready, extend one leg, then two legs up into the air. And maybe energize the legs by flexing the feet. Feeling like, so the heels are reaching for the ceiling. Strong legs. This also takes core strength really to be lying down, practically upside down with the legs in the air. Now, if you didn't have any type of core or strength or energy, you would not be able to hold your legs in the air. Okay, soften the legs, soften the feet, and maybe a little bicycle pedaling. I like to add this 
just so it just starts to relax the legs and the joints and continue that nice mobility in the joints. So what I like to do, you can certainly join me, I like to wiggle my toes, get into my toe joints, circle the feet, get into the ankles, make some circles there. The bicycle pedaling gets into the knees and the hips, okay? So this is just optional, whatever you like to do while the legs are in the air. Couple more breaths. And whenever you're ready, just slowly bring the feet back down to the ground. Maybe you're still seated on your stacked blocks. Hold, hold that for a few seconds. And again, if you're still on the blocks, let's press feet into the ground, lift the hips so you can remove the blocks out from underneath you and then come back down to the earth. Let's all meet there. Hold. Let's hug both knees into chest. And just notice what that feels like in the low back. Let's do another hip opener. First, just a variation of happy baby pose. So you're just holding onto your knees or shins and just take the legs wide apart until you feel that little stretch in the inner thighs. You can stay just like this for your happy baby pose or more traditionally send the feet up towards the ceiling, keeping the knees very bent. And if you can, hold on to the bottoms of the feet with your hands or even holding on to your ankles or shins. And this can be a static hold or you might add a little rocking sensation. Getting into the hips and low back a little bit. A few more breaths. I'm gonna do another more relaxing hip opener. All right, come back to stillness. You're gonna pr uh, press the soles of your feet together in the air, but then set the feet down onto the ground so the feet are still touching. Knees are bent, but they're just down towards the ground. Now, if your blocks are still handy, grab those blocks. You can set them underneath the knees if you'd like. Again, providing a little bit more support for the legs so they don't feel like they're just hanging out in space, but they're actually resting on an object so you can feel completely relaxed. There's no strain to the body or mind. And just find some deep breaths. So go ahead and take the time to return to your personal intention while we're here. If you set one at the beginning of your practice, just remind yourself of what that intention was. Let's go ahead and take three more breaths here. We'll add one more pose. Whenever you're ready, take your time to bring the knees together. Hug both knees in towards chest again, softly. Let's take a twist, a spinal twist. We'll start by taking both knees over to the left side, either all the way down to the floor, or use that block or, or book, whatever you've got on that left side. It can even be a rolled up blanket or towel. Again, something to support that side. As the knees go to the left, extend your right arm off to the right. Maybe some deep breathing here. Really, this pose is to complement the other two twisting postures we did. We did a seated twist, and of course, our revolving triangle. And go ahead and take three more breaths on this first side. Carefully return to center. You might hug your knees in towards chest again. Hold for a moment so that your back and spine uh, realign after that first rotation. And then when you feel ready, go ahead and take the knees slowly off to the right side. Use a 
block or blanket or books over there. Knees to the right, extending left arm to the left. And just return to slow, steady breath, breaths here. Let's go ahead and take three more breaths. You can certainly stay on this side a little longer if you need it. And when you're ready, slowly making your way back to center. Decide if you'd like to move into any other pose to help complete your practice, any other stretch or movement, or if you feel like you are complete, Go ahead and bring the feet down, extend the legs out in front of you onto the floor, arms resting down by your side so you can make your way into Shavasana. You can just lie flat on your mat. If you need a little extra support, bring in your blanket for your head, your whole underside, even a pillow for your head or to elevate your legs or feet. Bend your knees, whatever you need to do so you can feel quite comfortable. Feel free to keep your eyes open, just gazing up into nothingness. Or close your eyes and move inside. Slow, steady breaths to keep you here in the moment. If you notice that your mind began to wander, just be aware of that. And to bring you back to this present moment, just take a deep breath in and out. Reconnect. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you need to. As I end the practice and you'd like to stay in this relaxed state of mind and body, please feel free to do so. And when it is time to move, maybe start with five slow, deep breaths. Starting to feel movement return to your body. And then moving in slow motion, slowly and carefully, roll onto one side of your body. And then continue to move as slowly as you can, rising to a seated position. Sitting up nice and tall with an extended spine, relax shoulders and arms and hands. And one more movement together. We'll inhale, extend your arms into the air, reach and stretch. Exhale, bring your palms together and down to your heart. Hold here in stillness. Take another breath. 
And as we come to the close of our practice together, we bow saying, Namaste.